Hey guys, so we're going to start talking about gravity. So I'm going to start off with <clears throat> something maybe you're in my electrical engineering class and you might be familiar with Coulomb's law, which says the force of electricity is equal to a constant K times Q1, that's charge 1, we don't use C because C is the speed of light, times charge 2, Q for quantity in Coulombs. Coulombs kind of like a mole but different. There's 6.25 times 10 to the 18th electrons per coulomb. Or the charge of one electron called Q sub e is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th coulombs. We'll learn more about that. And this is R squared. So we're going to compare this to gravity. If you have charge one is one coulomb and charge two is one coulomb and you separate them by one meter, then the force between them is this constant K right here. And K is equal to 8.99 times 10 to the 9th Newtons. Okay, let's look at gravity. Force of gravity is equal to another constant, the universal gravitational constant, so that's big G, times mass 1, times mass 2, divided by the distance between them squared. So in the MKS units, this has to be kilograms, kilograms, and meters. So if we take two one kilogram masses, kind of imagine that, a kilogram and a kilogram, one meter apart, and we measure the attraction between them, we get the value for G, which is very different than K. G is 6.67 times 10, and check it out, this guy's to the positive ninth, this guy's to the negative eleventh. That's why gravity is so weak. <clears throat> now these formulas look very similar. Uh, which might make you think that electricity and gravitation are related and they've been looking for an answer for that for you know like I don't know a hundred years since Einstein was working on it and uh, still not there yet more on that later okay <laughs> that's a subject for 10,000 other videos so let's look at a gravitational attraction problem and for this problem our example will be find the mass of the sun okay Let's draw a free by diagram of that. So, here's the sun, and this is the Earth orbiting the sun with some velocity this away. Okay, the force of gravity is pulling it in. Okay, well, why don't we crash in the sun? Well, because we're traveling at some velocity, we must have a centripetal force that away. These things equal each other. So, F sub g must equal F sub C. And we have for F sub G, G, M1, M2, divided by the radius between them squared, M1, M2, I'll label those in a minute, has the equal to centripetal force. Well, what are our choices? Well, we have MV squared over R is the choice. We have M4 pi squared R over t squared is a choice, and we have m omega squared r is a choice. We could use any of these if we know the numbers. The easiest one to use for stuff like this is this guy, because we know the distance between the Earth and the Sun, and we know it makes one lap every 365 days, one year. So set that equal to m 4 pi squared r over t squared. Now, which m's are which m's? Well, one of these is the mass of the Earth, and one of these is the mass of the Sun. What's that guy? Well, that's the guy that's moving. The guy that's moving is the guy that has centripetal force. So that's the mass of the Earth moving. Notice, you have Earth on both sides of the equal sign. Cancels out. <clears throat> what we want to do is we want to solve this for the mass of the Sun. Okay, so we'll leave the mass of the Sun there and move everything else over. So I'll divide both sides by G. Okay, G's cancel. And then I'll multiply both sides by R squared. So we have an R squared and an R is in R cubed. Let's, let's make this cleaner. So mass of sun is equal to 4 pi squared R squared times R is R cubed divided by G T squared. Now that's not just the mass of the sun. That's the mass of anything orbiting anything if you know how far away it is and if you know how long it takes to make a lap. So R for this problem is one point. Uh, let's see, 4, 9 times 10 to the 11th meters. 
and the time it takes to make a lap <coughs> is uh, 365 days. That's a year. We can't use that number because it's not MKS. But we could take 300, 365 days. We could remove day and get hour. There's 24 hours a day. And we could remove hour and get seconds. And there's 3,600 seconds in an hour. Figure this out. Okay. This number is, I previously figured it out. It's 1, 3, 1, 5, 3, 6, 0, 0, 0 seconds. Okay. Plug into there. So 4 pi squared, 1.49 times 10 to the uh, 11th meters. Cube this. Boy, that's getting huge. Divide it by 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11th. Now it's getting huger because we're dividing by a decimal. And then also divide it by 1315360000. Ooh, it made it smaller but then square it and now it made it even smaller but the mass of the sun is equal to, if you do this, 1.96 times 10 to 30th kilograms that's a lot of mass okay most people say the sun is about 2 times 10 to 30th kilograms this is not a perfect calculation because the earth does not make a perfect circular orbit, it's elliptical um, and some other reasons but you know, hey if you don't like the mass of the sun, just wait. It's burning up nuclear, thermonuclear reacting and getting smaller. So, hey, don't worry about it. Okay. So, what I want you guys to do is I want you guys to find the mass of the Earth. Okay. Let me walk you through this a little bit using these numbers. Okay. The radius is one quarter million miles. Okay, and there's one point, uh, let's see, 1609 meters per mile. And the time is 28 days. That's how long it takes the moon to orbit the Earth. So it looks very similar, except you have the Earth here and you have the moon there. This only gives you a rough estimate. The reason why I chose this is because when I was a kid, I remember a guy named Walter Cronkite, Uncle Walty, who would say, And the gallant astronauts on their quarter million mile journey to the moon. Back in 1969, um, groovy. Okay, well, I was only eight years old and I wasn't a hippie. But, uh, you know, it was cool to experience a little of that anyway. So with this, you'll get uh, some kind of estimate of the mass of the Earth. And it'll be different than if you look it up on the back of the book or any reference or Google it. Okay, the other thing we have is we have this other problem. This comes from a Bugs Bunny cartoon. Remember, imagine Bugs here. And he throws a baseball and it orbits the Earth and comes back. Okay, So he throws the ball at some speed and that's what you're going to find is how fast you have to throw the baseball with one radius of orbit of the Earth that high to come back. Now the Earth isn't, you know, we're, we're assuming we're going to not hit Mount Everest or something like that. Okay, And it's kind of funny because Bugs is wearing a pitcher's uniform and when it comes around he's put on his catcher glove and catches the ball when it comes back. So um, to do that uh, you need to know the radius of the Earth. And the radius of the Earth is 6.37 times 10 to the 6 meters. Okay? And so we're assuming that, you know, the ball scrapes the surface, just above the surface of the Earth like that. And um, tell me uh, how fast. And this will be obviously meters per second. Okay? That's it for this one. Bye.